Japanese plan was to capture the gap, thereby expanding somewhat uh, and, and dividing the two brigades, preventing them from joining up. It, as it mentions there. Uh, cross Position. She went off to Japan, to their archives. Be easy, but it, it, it wasn't. So um, they came up um, Mount Parker, then to Mount Butler, following the path, all the way to coming down here to the west of Derby Lookout. So there are the three. As I'm sure Australians and Kiwis and all the rest, you know, let's forget the NT. Let's just defend Hong Kong Island. And that actually became the official policy. He describes being told to go ban. They attacked with six battalions uh, and a Japanese battalion at full strength would have been somewhere in the region of a thousand. Well, of course, they've taken casualties in the fighting in the yeah. new territories. Basically, each, each regiment, 228, 229, 230, as I mentioned earlier, three battalions in each, okay? Each regimental commander and each regiment was commanded by a full colonel uh, was told, drop off one battalion. So your regimental commander, leave one behind, two to attack. You're the same, you're the same. Right. So six, you're two, to into context in terms of um, the direction of the Japanese advance. A um, bit more about this later, called the inner defence line. But nobody... bullet holes that we're looking at were inflicted by Royal Scots over on Mount Nicholson across the valley there who were firing at the Japanese who had occupied this area. This Tell me about the Japanese landing on the northeast quadrant. Yeah. They said they would have come straight up the uh, Mount Parker in many cases. Okay. Across the valley, there's the gap. It's all falling into place. Here, firing down there, very, very close. They can inflict a lot of damage. You know, probably wasn't that long ago. And, but you know, ammunition, a map case. I think at one point, um, just here. And we do know that they suffered tremendous casualties. Really grenadiers, um, just about where he's going to warm up. December 2010, we had a large group of Canadians, including some veterans from the 1941 battle, come back to Hong Kong. Um, one of the three veterans in the battle actually served and fought in this bunker behind me. Uh, now at uh, probably what was the um, original magazines where the ammunition for the guns below would have been stored. Behind me is a gun position from the Second World War period, just before the war of course, and you can see this protective cupola over it. Okay, we're looking now at uh, where the positions where the shells for the gun uh, would have been position stored. here is a searchlight for the artillery gun position just behind us a bit further up the hillside there okay we're now in st stephen's college on the stanley peninsula the south side of the island and we're looking here at a building a rather lovely old building built in 1928 which uh, was the school library and this was the scene of a rather um, vicious massacre which took place on Christmas Day 1941 just before the British surrender. Japanese soldiers on the morning of Christmas Day came to this entrance here to the, to the school building. At that time it was being used as a field hospital by the British military. Two military doctors came out to try and stop them. They were immediately bayoneted and up to 150 Japanese soldiers went into the building and started to kill soldiers inside. Here at the Sheko roundabout this was known as a line of gap pill boxes one of the line of gap we'll watch it. and uh, this particular one looks down the Titan Road. Yeah. You know, they, they couldn't scare away any snakes if you find them. Huh? We're looking at the east side of the old Supreme Court building built in 1910 and you'll see close up uh, to the of the building you'll see shrapnel damage from the uh, ba Battle of Hong Kong. It's here quite clearly marked in this uh, granite wall and you can see also where pieces of metal shrapnel etc were removed from the granite wall. It's 
standing outside the headquarters of the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank in number one Queens Road Central. We're looking at one of the two famous bronze lions. Which, this is the back part of the statue of Stephen, bronze lion. As you can see, it sustained quite a bit of damage during the war from Japanese bombing and shelling. This lion was sent off to Japan to be melted down for bronze. Uh, but it never actually happened. Uh, but at the end of the war, it was brought back to Hong Kong and reinstated outside the bank building. bungalows used by the Japanese during the occupation which followed the war at the battle um, for the uh, internment of uh, Allied civilians. Of Sir Stephen's College. We're walking around the school grounds here and we're looking at one of the staff bungalows. But in 1941 onwards it was called Bungalow C and this again was a, one of the bungalows used by internees um, <coughs> during the Japanese occupation. In that year, 1945, um, this building was the subject of friendly fire. It was accidentally bombed by Americans who were looking for a Japanese target nearby. Um, and a number of people, 14 people, were killed. Following um, the Japanese surrender in August 1945, a senior British uh, civil servant who was actually here in Stanley uh, by the name of Franklin Jimson took senior civil servants down to the Court of Final Appeal building next to St John's Cathedral and slowly started to get the place back on its feet. Okay, we're looking now at a, a number of headstones. These are graves of internees, people, uh, both um, uh, men and women, of course, uh, who died during the Japanese occupation. <laughs> 